Alright ladies and gentlemen, this is Johnny Mo, also known as The Dutchman, and I am making a quick tutorial on how to add a ambient light glow or a volumetric light glow or however you want to call it um, to your ships in Empire at War. This will also show the Bake to Texture uh, function of 3ds Max, which will be somewhere in here. Uh, but we'll get to there. Um, once we get there, I'm going to be showing it on the ship, the Eclipse, which is what I'm currently trying to make a few volumetric light glows for. Uh, this tutorial is mostly meant for uh, community member Doki, who asked for it. Um, but if anyone else finds it interesting, uh, well, here you go. There are several steps you have to take to get the glows baked onto your texture and the texture which is then via the mesh editive mesh edit to your model which also has to be a separate mesh of course um, what are we going to start I'm going to do the tutorial for just one section I'm thinking what would be easier uh, probably this okay so first of all I'm going to save this into a separate file save as uh, yeah one so that I can go back and undo any things that I want undone once we are done since this is of course purely for um, educational purposes okay so what I'm going to do is I want this engine glow or it's not really an engine glow this is the super laser glow I want this glow to appear on the main ship mesh in the much the same way you can see here which makes it looks look as if the um, super laser connection point here is firing I don't want this on the model at all times I just want it active when the super laser fires and I will simply unhide and hide um, the mesh with a animation so first of all I'm going to delete all of this because it is not needed. Yeah, that can go. Okay, let's see. Do we have any... Yep, every object is still here. Okay, so basically what we want to do is we want to render to texture all of these Omnis. Um, first of all, you may wonder what are these. Omnis are simply light points and there are a few specific options that you need to set in your viewport in order to actually get this effect. First of all, let me just... Select them all. Ah, I could just go to Omni selection. Delete all the Omnis so that you know what this is all about. So this is your viewport. This is a your normal ship setup. Um, we want to actually make it ready for bake to texture the Omnis that we are going to place wherever we want. In this case, the super laser trench. So first of all, we are going to go to configure and we are going to set shadows on. Simply set on, apply to active view, and then OK. Um, that's about the extent of it. Now you go to standard. Let's see, where's the Omnis? I always forget these things. I normally just uh, copy them over from somewhere. Ah, standard Omni. OK, so ladies and gentlemen, we now have an Omni. What is an Omni? A Omni is a light point. There are a few different settings. There's Omni, there's Spot, there is Directional. We are going to simply use Omni. Um, there are a few important settings here and there are many, many ways to absolutely screw this up. So I will try to tell you exactly which option does what and how to um, make the most effective use for it. Um, the most important option, I would say for your omnis is the shadows and whether or not you want to actually render them for example if we put our omni here in the trench it would be logical that um, light cannot reach these plateaus over here because obviously there is a face blocking this so that would not be realistic so what we do is we turn shadows on and now the omni is restricted to only cast light on objects which are not hidden behind other meshes. Of course you could have simply turned this off if you want a more ambient uh, looking Omni but mostly you want the shadows on for most purposes. For example now you cast the shadow in the ravine you get the picture. 
Okay, intensity and color. Here you can set the color for your Omni. You can pick anything you want, but you will of course have to consider for which purpose you want to use it. The engine glows will be red, so you obviously want red ambient glow. Um, the super laser is going to fire green, so you obviously want to fire a green color. Then we go down here, the decay, ta or wait, the multiplier first. The multiplier is the direct light intensity. You can set this. This is not how far the light reaches. This is just the intensity of the light. For example, this is one. You can go, you can go down. You can go all the way down to zero, which oh, you can even go minus. I'm not sure if that actually casts black or what, but I just use zero and up. And from here on out, you can turn it on. Um, if you simply want the Omni to turn off, by the way, don't set this to zero because you will lose whatever value you had here. Simply turn it off um, via here, light type on. You can simply turn off any Omnis you want off uh, via this. Another thing I forgot to mention is that you actually have to go to uh, realistic up here. You go to, let's see, lighting and shadows, illuminate with scene lights. If you illuminate with default lights, you're going to get this, and your Omni is not going to illuminate your scene. That's, of course, not what you want to have happen. Uh, lighting and shadows, illuminate with scene lights, and the scene lights are the Omnis you are placing. Now, there are a few options here, which... Um, this is a bit more complicated, I will go through them briefly. There's the decay type, which simply means how fast does, does the light um, go out the further you go away from the Omni. You can set it to inverse or inverse squared, which is basically just a algorithm which makes it break down faster. Um, personally, I like inverse squared because it very aptly shows um, the size of the ship. Basically, the less you illuminate, the bigger the object looks. And for an object like this, we of course need the biggest look. So we're going to go to inverse squared, and then we are going to, just for demonstration purposes, place it right here. Um, there is the show. This you can turn off, at least for the... Uh, start now for the annoying options this is where you start to actually develop the light that you actually want to see the start basically means how um, at, at which distance from the center which is of course the point of the omni from where does it start to break down your uh, light for, so for example if you set this to range 200 and you set this to uh, well, if you have it selected, it will show you right here. Then across this area, you will get full lighting. And from two on 200 on out, it will start to break down via the um, whatever decay type you've set, either inverse squared, um, inverse or none. Um, then we go to distance. Distance is actually better shown if I set this off. Um, don't use this, only use far attenuance, attenu, well, whatever this is. Um, 750 is uh, pretty damn large. If I set this to, for example, 200. Oh yeah, and of course, click um, click use. Um, if you set it to 200, it will limit your light to um, the range of 200. If you set this to, for example, 400, it will limit it to 400. And if you now set one of the decay types, like say inverse or inverse squared, you will see how the start, which is now set to 200, which is the inner circle, will start to affect uh, the light. Now, for example, if you set start to 10, you will get this, start to zero. Well, I mean, you get the picture. The further you set this out, the more heavy um, your light will be, even though you set it to inverse squared, if you have a start of 200, it will still only start breaking down around here. It is generally good to, at least in my experience, set a very, very narrow start, um, say 20, and then you use the far setting to, no, let's, let's say this. Okay, so now that we talked about that, I can see if this is actually anything important. I don't think so. Yeah, you can set the shadow color if you really want. I've not, I've not played around. Ah, yeah, yeah. Then you get these types of effects. Um, I would recommend not messing around with this. So now that we've 
discuss the omnis and the omni types and the way they function. Also remember that turning shadows on and off can give you quite a different result. I'm going to go back to the original omnis I had placed in the super laser trench. Right, that should be all of them. Good. So this is the effect that I now want to actually have on a separate mesh and activate and deactivate via the super laser firing animation. How the hell do we do this? Well, first of all, we need a copy of all the faces that we have illuminated with our lights. Um, how do we do that? Well, we simply have to isolate every face. It's really as simple as that. Um, you can click on your Omnis to see what the maximum range is that you actually have to start copying, which in this case is right about over here. Um, and from there on out, it's actually a very simple case of just deleting everything that you don't need. I have already... Um, let's see, do we show you the poly effective way or do we show you the 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 very, very texture inefficient way? It's actually both texture and poly inefficient. Let's go with the poly efficient way because that's generally what you want to be using. You don't want to spend a bunch of resources of the game on fancy details like this because it'll just slow the game down to a crawl and it'll hate itself and you. So what we are going to do is we're going to apply a empty material to this entire object. We, as you can see, we have now lost the texture, but that is actually a good thing. And we are going to simply attach every... We're going to attach every single face to a single object, which... If we go to the list, we now should have our hull, which is our main object, and we should have all those omnis. Uh, and that's a hidden object, we don't need to bother with this. We apply the empty material again to get a completely um, to to drown out the texture entirely, and from this point forward, we can simply start cutting away every poly that we don't need, which is this entire front. Um, let's see, is this still? Yeah, a little bit. So you can keep this. Um, I imagine these are hit. Yeah, so we don't want to delete these. Are these hit? No, that's the uh, that's the end of the. As I said, the range. Um, let's do this better. Slice plane. Simply set it to the range of whatever the omni was, which was furthest, which is about there. Uh, where's my slice plane? Uh, slice plane, ah yes. Was it about here, I think? Yeah. And then we slice. And then we move it all, whoops, move it all the way back over here. And then we find the nearest Omni. We check out its range, it is right about there. Sure as I think here. And then we slice again. And then we simply select everything north of this and delete it. And everything south of here and we delete it. And we have now successfully isolated a lot of the faces that we need. Now, this is of course not everything, since there are a whole bunch of faces over here that we still do not want to actually have on our texture. For example, everything below this trench is not used. So we simply select all of this again. Uh, this time I'm going to use object. This is a very simple case of just isolating every object that you don't need and deleting it. I'm sure there's a better way. This is how I do it. Let's see. 